uh, and then I'm ready to paint. Now in this case I'm leaving my rough layer on because I have a whole background to look at. Um, so now I will add a new layer, call that painting, okay, uh, and I make the painting layer set to multiply, okay. Um, now as before I'm working on the in progress layer and I use another custom brush. Uh, I can give you my brushes when you when you're ready to paint. Um, now one thing I do is I I draw at 100% but work but paint at 50%. Okay. Uh, in either case, it's hard to see the whole picture um, unless you have a small window like this. Now usually my small window. I will set to 25% because it's the the size. It, this is about the size a 300 DPI image would print at. Okay, so I'm working. I'll paint from background to foreground. Okay, so let me since I'm doing the background first. Let's say I'm 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 going to select like a brick color or something. Okay, and usually the way this brush works, this custom brush. Um, I have a similar color and then I have light and dark versions of it. Okay. Now I want to paint the background so I don't want to paint my character. I will select my character, uh, select transparency on that layer and then invert it so that when I paint I'm only painting behind the character. Um, now this brush, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on this small capture but um, you can see the the hard edge of every brush stroke because of the settings. Not every brush stroke, but every individual instance of the brush. So that's too harsh. Um, it gives me a, a more a less computer uh, effect, a more natural looking effect. If I set my opacity and flow lower, so that it close to 50, somewhere between 50 and 70 percent, I've used and I like. Um, so let's say I'm going to paint, this is going to be that brick color behind him. Okay, now if you can, I don't know if you can tell in the screen capture, but you can see the nuances of different, uh, uh, the edges of the brush can, are still visible, but they're so subtle it looks more like paper texture. Okay, so that's why I think it works for as a watercolor simulation okay because it's 50 percent opacity uh, I can use it to darken it up just like you would with watercolor you know each stroke in the water will will add more color and build it up but I can also switch a color to the lighter color okay and can I go light ah uh, I can't set it to dark I gotta take the dark off set it to normal so I can paint light on top of that okay or I can paint dark and essentially I can go back and forth. Let's say I'm going to make it kind of dark under the awning. Okay, well, not the awning, but the, the the sign for the store. And then I make it a brighter, lighter brick color uh, under that and for most of it. Now notice that the more I paint, the more I hide the underdrawing. Uh, in this case, the rough drawing. Usually I would use the, the inked drawing there. Um, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll turn that layer to 90% opacity. Oh, look at that. I was painting on my ink layer. That's precisely why I don't like working on that layer. I work on my in progress layer. Fortunately, I had made a selection, so I'm going to cut the painting, paste it on my in progress layer, move it into place. I notice I can work there or I can work on the big window. Okay. Um, so now it's my, my ink layer is intact. I'm working on my in progress layer. That's the one that I can make 90% if I'm losing the, the underdrawing too much. Okay. Let's say I'm happy with that. Uh, I can merge it down, create a new in progress layer. My in progress layer now is empty. My multiply painting layer is underneath. Okay. So again, painting from back to front, let's say now I want to work on uh, the ground. I'm going to make it uh, a grayish color. 
pick two grays, one light, one dark. Um, and I can then paint the sidewalk gray. I can switch back and paint the, the shadow under him. Switch back to the light color. Okay. And I can lighten. Now this is even the light color is almost not light enough or they're both too dark so I'm gonna lighten that and maybe I'll keep that light the dark color dark for now and I paint 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 just basically I'm working in layers you know um, the way this brush is working, it's just creating some texture as I, as I work. I don't worry so much about the texture, um, as I do about the color. The color, is it the right color? Is it, uh, the right light and dark and all that kind of stuff? Um, so let's say I'm happy with that. I can merge that down, create a new progress layer. And you can see it, it's made to multiply so I can see through it. Now uh, I'm going to start painting my character. I can select the ink for the character so I only paint there. Okay, I'm going to pick uh, some kind of skin tone, give him some Simpson skin. Um, and I start with skin just because it's behind the hat okay I can go back and forth between light and dark light and dark light and dark uh, and render it that way merge that down and then I'm gonna get a a color that's pretty distinct uh, for the hat just so we can tell it apart um, again two kinda two shades of that color um, I paint the hat over there now because it's on a separate layer I can I can fix and change that without messing up his face okay uh, so let's say let's say I want to give it a base color bring that down to the the painting layer uh, and then do my highlights without worrying about messing stuff up work from the back to the front so I'm working on the, the the brim and I can do some shading that way and then just erase oops too big of a brush erase the hat merge that down and we can see now the thick black line around it and that's that's my process hope it helps bye